what if you could brainwash people to literally buy your stuff on command every single time? In this video, I'm going to tell you the three things that you have to sell somebody on every single time, no matter what you're selling, where you are, what you're doing. But at least in my context, my name is Danny and I help content creators, online coaches, consultants, people start and scale coaching programs, info products, etc. So I have a client that wants to build a VSL. And specifically for them, I told them, hey, let's actually not build a VSL. Let's build a webinar instead. So we pivoted the plan a little bit and we decided to build a webinar. And the webinar is usually a little bit longer. It's usually an hour and a half to two hours, two hours on the longer end. But I built him about an hour running time webinar. And I tried to explain to him the three things that we're really trying to accomplish on this webinar. Um, because it's really easy to get stressed out, especially if you're not good at sales or you feel like you're not good at sales and you don't like sales. And I told him that there's really three things that you're, we're trying to convince every single prospect on this webinar on. And I've, I'm not some multi-billionaire, but I have sold at least a few hundred thousand dollars in the online space. So the, the first thing is people want to believe that what they're doing is a new vehicle. Right. And the whole process of the webinar is to really knock over the big dominoes, Russell Brunson would say. It's in Russell Brunson's the founder of Click ClickFunnels, if you don't know, which is knock over the big domino. So people need to believe in the vehicle that you're selling, whatever it is that, that you have, whether it's TikTok shop, whether it's Amazon FBA, whether it's drop shipping, they need to believe that that's the thing that's going to get them from where they are right now to where they want to get to. Because people don't buy coaching. They buy the coaches themselves, whoever's teaching the actual program, that's who they buy. And in addition to that, people want an outcome. They don't care about the process. They just want the 10 grand a month. They just want to lose the 20 pounds. So if you can sell the outcome or if you can sell the vacation ticket, as everyone says, like they don't care that they're going to be stuck in three hours of traffic and I have to pay this much for parking and just sell the vacation. But the main thing, the first thing is we want to sell people on the thing, the vehicle, or the new opportunity to get them from point A to point B. That's the first thing. So I, I told him, I said, Hey, so I mean, you, you have experience in this area. I mean, what do you think? Um, what would you say is your secret really to how you create um, your content or whatever? Because he's like in the online content creation space. And then he told me that, you know, he has different strategies and whatnot. I said, okay, this is actually really cool. Let's put a cool name on it. Let's call it XYZ. The new um, dropshipping method, for example, or the new a method to get fit, whatever it's called. It's your proprietary method. The reason we do this is because you want to have a blue ocean. Because if you have your own method, your own strategy, your own proprietary framework, quote unquote, like your own patent, no one can copyright it. No one can say it. that's, it's like you have your own space and no one can compete against you. So hypothetically speaking, let's just say, um, like my client, he's in the videography space. It's like, I said, hey, let's call it the viral videography method, right? Let's use that instead. It's more captivating because then no one else can copy what you do or what you sell. And it's your own method. Because if people don't believe the opportunity itself, everyone's going to doubt if the thing can even work in the first place. Because they're going to think, okay, maybe this product doesn't really work for me. Maybe it's business opportunity really isn't for me. Maybe it's not, it's not really, I'm not really sold yet because I don't believe in the thing. So what we try to do to overcome that concern, because really on the, on a webinar, on a VSL, on anything, is you have to overcome or pre-handle objections. So when they get to the close or when you drop the price, when you do the stack, right, you hype it up a little bit, you do the stack and you boom, you drop the price on the webinar, people buy. So for people to buy, you have to, you have to handle and pre-handle all the objections beforehand. And honestly, if you spend like 30 minutes on a webinar, just pre-handling objections that people usually have, you're going to print money. And the same thing with the, with the VSL to make a good VSL, just look at all your sales calls that you've had in the past and then see all the objections and the most common ones, put a tally next to them and start marking them and start stacking them in regards to, oh, this objection had the most amount of questions. This one had the least amount of questions. Okay. I'm going to answer all these in the VSL starting from the one that had the most amount of questions and in your video sales letter, whether it's five to 15 minutes or even in your webinar, whatever your, or even in your YouTube videos, like in your YouTube videos, you can have a YouTube video related to each of the objections that you have. You put them in a playlist and now every single person, before they come book a call with you, they have to watch that playlist. 
So when they come to the call, they're going to be so much more nurtured. So to overcome this concern, um, what I told them to do is, hey, you got to show evidence, you got to show proof, you got to show testimonials, case studies, and you got to show that your product or service or your strategy, your new opportunity actually works. Because once the person believes that the vehicle is the thing that's going to get them from point A to point B, they're going to buy. The second reason people won't buy is because they don't believe in themselves being capable of doing whatever the thing is. So whether it's starting an agency, whatever your opportunity that you're selling to them is, whether it's starting a real estate business, um, starting in um, their YouTube channel, whatever your biz op, whatever you're selling in the online space or anything for that matter, uh, especially when it comes to a specific transformation that you're selling, people won't believe in themselves. So let's say that you're helping people um, overcome a porn addiction, right? Well, the first thing is they have to believe that your strategy or your method or whatever your proprietary framework for them to get from point A to point B is what they need, right? That's the vehicle. That's the new opportunity. That's whatever your framework is. Once they believe in that, then it's like, okay, I believe in it. That makes sense. I'm sold on that. But it's like, I can't really do it myself because of X, Y, Z. So this belief is really around the customer and the prospect self doubt that they have in between themselves. Because a lot of people will think like, oh, I don't have, I'm not good with, um, let's just say that like you're helping people online in the online space. Oh, I might not be good with tech or I don't know how to build a funnel. I don't know how to do any of this stuff. I'm not capable with that stuff. Or how do you bring traffic in, right? I'm not smart because they'll, they'll see you, the person teaching them everything as an expert, as, as a G basically. And you have to tell them that, Hey, I'm actually an average person. Like I'm not that smart. You want to bring yourself down here. That's what you see VSLs. When they make the offer, they go back and they start with, Hey, this is literally me. I'm really dumb. I'm stupid. I'm retarded. I know nothing. Same with the web or the webinar. It's always like, this was me. Um, when I got started and I was just 20, I wanted to do everything. And it's like, you want to empathize with the person and make yourself be equal with them essentially, because that builds confidence in the prospect. And it tells the prospect in their mind, like, Hey, if they did it, then I can do it too. It, sh it shouldn't be that hard. And then that also sells, sells it for the prospect basically. And so the main way to get around this or to overcome this objection for people not being able to do it themselves is you say, okay, everything I've done, you want to make it plug and play push button uh, to success, right? So it's like they can push a button and they get everything, whether it's giving people templates, giving people scripts, giving people copy and paste stuff that they can already put in. You want to make it as basically as copy and paste as possible. So the more things you give away to the people to say, Hey, literally I've done all the work for you. You don't have to do anything. You can use my calculator, my template, my spreadsheet, my document, and I have everything I've already done years and years of work for you. So you can use it for yourself. P people are going to buy it. People are going to got, oh, they're going to buy it because they're going to say, Oh, this guy has done everything. And also I know I can do it because he also brought himself down to me and he was just an average guy like me a few years ago. So if he can do it, I can do it. And so that's why I'm um, in the VSL or in a webinar or in your YouTube videos, really commonly repeating over and over that you're just an average guy. That you're really not that smart. It helps sell a lot more in that sense, because it shows the people that, Hey, if this guy can do it, I can do it as well. Then the last thing is, you want to pretty handle any objections based on any external factors that has, that the prospect has to go through. So opportunity, internal, external, this comes from Russell Brunson. He explains it in his book. And I wanted to kind of break it down for you guys. Cause I had to explain this to a client, what the main reason that we're doing the webinar for and what to really sell with the webinar. You're not selling, you're not selling how to edit. You're not selling how to drop ship. You're not telling them how to do things. You're wowing them the whole time. And you're just pre-handling objections over and over and over without the prospect even knowing. People think that they don't have enough time, they don't have the money, uh, you know, there's some other external thing out there not letting them succeed and actually do the thing that you're selling. Uh, people might say, hey, I actually don't have enough time, like I said, uh, I can't afford this right now, X, Y, Z. And so that's the last objection. So they believe that they can do it, but for some other reason, they, they, they can't do it, right? And so honestly, the external has to do with, you know, it's more of a logistical objection at this point, but sometimes it's not, sometimes it's not. So as long as you handle the opportunity first, the internal second, which is they can do it, 
then the last part is usually the easier. If you look at most objections, how most objections are handled, um, you want to always tackle uncertainty first, always. People will tell you it's an external factor, but reality, it's they don't believe in the opportunity. So they'll tell you that, hey, like, um, I don't know if I can make this work. I'm just, I don't have the money, right? But then the always you want to always isolate the objection and ask, well, hey, all things aside, money aside, do you feel like this would really work for you? Right? And you want to ask the process to make sure that they actually believe in the process because if they don't believe in the process, they're not going to buy from you. So once you handle that, you handle that they can actually do it themselves and it's possible for them. And then the last one is the external factors, which is, yes, we can get you the money. Yes, we can do payment plans. Um, you, but you told me earlier, you tie them down, right? You said you told me earlier that you did have enough time for this. What? But now you're telling me that you're not, right? What's the real concern here? And you try to get them to open up, right? Because that's probably not the actual objection. It's probably just a smoke screen. So, I mean, that's an in-person sale. But doing this sale um, on a webinar or something, it would be explaining why you have to take action now, adding scarcity, adding urgency. And guys, this even applies to any stories that you make on Instagram, any reels that you make on Instagram, any posts you make on X, uh, any posts that you make on YouTube videos. It's not just a VSL or a webinar. Every single piece of content that you're making in the online space, you're always telling people on either why yourself, why you're qualified, on why, why your method is the best method, or on why they should do it now, and why they, and why they have to take action now. So that's it for this video. And um, I talked to another videos. So I have some other videos where I break down some sales calls. So if you want to check out those, you can. But besides that, that's it for this video. And we'll see you on the next one.